Welcome, it's indisputable. I'm your host, Rashad Richie, good to be with you. We have a lot on the agenda today. Breaking down news of the day, none other than David Schuster, TYT contributor and Rebel HQ superstar. Should be a fascinating breakdown. First story of the day, a United States citizen was almost deported, was arrested by the federal government, held, incarcerated for many days, and finally released when an attorney believed him. He was never not a citizen. Yeah, he's a black male. All right, let's get to it. Let's put up his picture full mass. Let me tell you about the horrific story, the thing that happened to Brian Buckle. Never should have happened, but it did. 62 years of age, was detained and almost deported to the British Virgin Islands because immigration officers refused to believe that he was a US citizen and they refused to even check. Mr. Buckle, born in the British Virgin Islands, was automatically naturalized through his parents in the 1960s. He was nine years of age, but in June 2020, while he thought he would be going home from prison to reunite with his son, in time for Father's Day, he was told that immigration and customs, the enforcement wanted him out of the country. So ICE said, you have to go. Here's a quote, I came this close to being deported and losing everything. A nightmare that has stayed with me to this day, Mr. Buckle said. Civil advocates believe Buckle was subjected to the treatment because of his race. The US government settled a wrongful arrest lawsuit with Mr. Buckle on December 5th for $150,000. Not enough money in my opinion, I will tell you why in a minute. Data shows that ICE disproportionately selects black immigrants for deportation. According to the Black Alliance for Just Immigration, black immigrants are more likely to be targeted for deportation and come in contact with ICE than immigrants of other races. While 7% of non-citizens in the US are black, they account for 20% of those facing deportation triggered by the criminal justice system. The organization that advocates against anti-black racism in the immigration process said, now there's more. Buckle was incarcerated in 2018 for two years for assault and possession of a firearm. He was convicted and spent his time. Gave his time, he's now a free man according to the docket, but that's not what happened. While in custody, he told California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation staff that he was a US citizen. Told them this on numerous occasions. And it was noted in their files that he told them, hey, I am in fact a US citizen. However, prison staff decided to ignore the proclamation of this human being and classified him as a potential ICE hold, which means the federal government needs to come and look at this. In addition, all of the applications identified Mr. Buckle's parents as the route to his siblings citizenship. The documents also confirm that their naturalization started the same day Buckle's mother and father completed the American citizenship process. Still, immigration officer, uh, the immigration officer who sent the request to the prison to detain Mr. Buckle for 48 hours would have been released to transfer to an ICE detention center. Uh, said had uh, said he had probable cause to do so based on, get this, biometric confirmation of Mr. Buckley's identity and records check of federal databases. Now let me pause on this and then I will give you the rest of the story. What in the hell is that? Okay. Well, a biometric determinant is basically something like voice recognition, facial description or facial recognition. Fingerprints can be included. Also, fingernails, DNA, things of that nature. So what is the federal agent talking about? That he has some kind of biometric information that somehow supersedes any other information that may be part of the system. Well, that remains a mystery today. We never got to the bottom of it, unfortunately. Uh, the lawsuit says Mr. Buckle maintained that he was a US citizen the entire time and repeatedly requested to the prison staff to remove the immigration hold, but they did not. Instead, 
of being picked up by his family on June 16th, 2020. Mr. Buckle was picked up by ICE the next day. You're not a citizen, you're a foreigner, one prison guard reportedly told the man. Two security guards employed by G4S Secure Solutions Inc. went to the prison and arrested Mr. Buckle before transporting him to the ICE subfield office in Bakersville, California. However, the ACLU Foundation of North California, Advancing Justice Asian Law Caucus and the law firm Sidley Austin LLP, which filed the lawsuit on the man's behalf, claimed the security guards had no authority to arrest Mr. Buckle, even though they were outsourced by ICE. The practice also was also banned during the summer in another lawsuit settlement. ICE and CDCR didn't care about me or my life, he said. Mr. Buckle is just one of several potential US citizens arrested, detained, or deported by ICE over the past few years, and the vast majority of them, yep, people of color. Mr. Buckle also told ICE officers at the field office that he was a US citizen through his parents' naturalization. However, the lawsuit says deportation officer R. Cruz checked the database and found only evidence of his father's US citizenship status, not his mother's. He told Buckle, we're going to send you back. Buckle then asked the immigration officer to speak to his brothers to confirm his status, but Agent Cruz refused. The older man spent 36 days in an ICE detention center before a lawyer intervened on his behalf and he was released. Here's what you will not hear. You will not hear Marjorie Taylor Greene outraged by the federal government treating this man this way. He's a US citizen. You will not hear Mitch McConnell outraged by the treatment of this US citizen. You will not hear Lindsey Graham, Donald Trump or others on the right outraged by this miscarriage of justice because he's the wrong color. Understand this, if this would have happened to a white male or white female, they would have been all on top of this, making the federal government the villain and the individual incarcerated the hero. That's what they would have done. But when the context changes in reference to skin color, all of a sudden, there's this very different proclamation of facts. What happened to this man should have never happened. He is in fact exactly who he said he was. Now think about the process of um, negligence here. Number one, he told prison staff exactly who he was. Number two, it was actually noted on his file. Number three, they ignored his own truth and decided to still contact ICE. ICE gets involved, they subcontract to a private company to go and have him arrested, detained. And it wasn't until multiple law firms got involved, multiple advocacy organizations stood up. And that's when Mr. Buckle was released. That is the reason I say $150,000 is not enough for what this man went through. All right, David, thoughts here. I just I feel horrible for Mr. Buckle and this this goes to show that the racism is not just the security guards and the people involved. There is an institutional racism in this system as well that needs to be addressed because what happens is it's so easy for somebody in this system in which you have immigration and custom enforcement decide they get to decide who's going to be an American who's not. They don't get to and and they can use arbitrary reasons for who they go after. And so when you have, it's like a snowball effect. When you have a couple of people, the security guards who are clearly racist, who for whatever reason don't like Mr. Buckle and don't like the idea that he somehow may be freed in America. This whole thing starts to snowball because we have institutional racism that combines with the individual racism. And until we realize that, and until we realize that we are giving so much power, so much ridiculous power to in agencies like ICE and others, this is this is gonna continue to happen. And I just I'm just glad that Mr. Buckle is still alive and that he didn't give up after you know a couple of years in prison and then suddenly now he's behind bars and ice, that he would have the fortitude to keep going and to keep going and to realize, okay, I'm gonna eventually I'm gonna beat this. Good for him. That's a great role yeah. model for all of us. Yeah, that's right. And all of the levels that decided to ignore what he said, I guarantee you, David, they're saying, you know, I'm not racist. 
what, what, what I did was a mistake. But you have to think about it, everybody made the same mistake with Mr. Buckle. Every agency, every department, every layer of protocol made the exact same mistake with Mr. Buckle. That's called, as you said, brother, institutional. And that is why it is worthy of examination through the context of critical race theory or other critical thinking dynamics as it relates to race in America. Karens all across the country, really fuming. Yes, the existence of Black Santa. Here it is. What do you want for Christmas this year? With Christmas quickly approaching, children all over the world are preparing for a trip to see Santa. But as Stafford Braxton tells us, it's not just any Santa many are looking for, but a Black Santa. I'm looking for the beard. But I'm also foremost looking for the spirit. Braxton is capitalizing on the growing demand for Black Santas. As the founder of Santas Just Like Me, which launched in 2013, he hires Black Santas and gets them booked for holiday events and photo ops around the country. The reservations got full so quick. Braxton's Black Santas complete Santa school, with a group of men portraying jolly old Saint Nick, learn the history of Santa and how to best work with kids and parents and more. Uh, we teach about uh, decorum, you know, how to interact with the children, the parents, uh, poses you need to know, how to um, just keep your beard looking good. Hey, ho, ho, ho. Despite the overwhelming positive feedback his Black Santa business receives, occasionally he deals with a few naughty people who dip into racism, including a woman who recently told him. Uh, white children should not be going to see Black Santa. One they went so far as to still call us slaves. But Braxton doesn't let a few naughties distract his Black Santas from what's most important, the spirit of Christmas and putting smiles on children's faces. Let me say this, because I have more video to provide context. Santa Claus in the formation you see him today, this is a fictional character, okay? popularized in imagery by a campaign from Coca-Cola. Now, did Coca-Cola create the concept? No, they popularized the concept and restricted how we would view Santa Claus. Let me go to another dynamic, this is more psychological. It is important, if you celebrate Christmas or not, it is important that children see themselves in positive characters, even if those characters are fictional, okay? This may not be a big deal to you, but obviously it was a big deal to people like Megyn Kelly, who one time on Fox News, when she had her own show, wanted all of the children who watch her late night boring ass show, she wanted the children to know that Santa Claus was in fact a white man and children don't let anybody else tell you different. Now, I don't know what child is watching your show, madam, at that time. Um, but here it is. You know, when you're constantly speaking your mind, you're gonna say things that don't always resonate or people don't agree with. Um, I think one notable one is Santa is white on Fox was a moment. In Slate, they have a piece uh, on .com, Santa Claus should not be a white man anymore. And mm -hmm. when I saw this headline, I kind of laughed and I said, oh, this is so ridiculous. Yet another person claiming it's racist to have a white Santa, you know? And by the way, for all you kids watching at home, Santa just is white, but this person is just arguing that, that maybe we should, we should also have a black Santa. But you know, Santa is what he is. And just so you know, we're just debating this because someone wrote about it, kids. Someone wrote about a kid, so we gotta talk about it. But just so you know, Santa Claus is white. Here's what's fascinating. Did you see everybody else on TV? Everybody else was sitting there, mm, yeah. Listen, y'all wanna be on TV that bad that you would allow some foolishness like that to be said and not challenge it? The day after that, she actually was not on her show. This happened a few years ago. The day after that, she was not on her show. We do believe she was probably suspended. It was a firestorm on social media when she said this. She also told people that Jesus was white too in that same exact segment. And later, she interviewed about it, as you see. She was posed the question, hey, do you regret any of these ridiculous things you said? Here's her answer. I regret a lot of what I've said. I mean, you're gonna be on the air several hours a week, live television, you're gonna say stupid <laughs> um, It's That's just the reality, you know? Um, so yeah, there's a lot I'd like to go back and say differently. Um, 
All I can tell you is, I think the lens is a truth teller. And people who watch you day after day will see who you are without the caricature of you that's put out there by websites and so on looming over you. Um, you know, I, one of my great struggles at Fox was I felt everything I did was viewed through a negative prism by those who didn't like Fox. Ah, typical Karenicity happening here. Blame others for the actions you commit to. Yeah, that's how you take full responsibility, Megan. Okay, back to good news. Let's put up the picture full mass of this amazing program created by this amazing business leader. Stafford Braxton, 61 years of age, out of Huntersville, North Carolina. He's in the center. He stands alongside some of his black Santas as part of his Santa Just Like Me business. This actually started in 2013, has picked up significant traction since. Although the concept of black men portraying Santa Claus has been around for decades. The novelty of black Santas can still be a rare sight. It was just in 2016 that America's largest mall, the Mall of America in Minnesota, hosted its first black Santa in its 30 year history, portrayed by Mr. Larry Jefferson. However, the historic moment was not a welcome sight for everyone. As some white people flooded racist comments on message boards following Jefferson's debut as Santa, according to the BBC. Here's another uh, Santa in action, all right? You, you see that kid, that's what it's about. Is the kid happy? Is the kid smiling? Yes. Santa Claus represents to a lot of children, a person who is held in high esteem and universally recognized and who is undoubtedly an authority figure. Children of all ethnicities need to see that men of color can live up to those standards, according to Mr. Keynes. It's my opinion that much of our society tends not to be of the mind that men of color can fit that bill and that needs to change. It's an honor for me to do what I can do to remedy that notion. There's a study called the Clark Dahl study. It was done decades ago. And this study would put a white doll and a black doll next to each other. And children were allowed to view each doll and start answering questions about what they believed each doll was. And so when the question was posed, which doll is bad? Black children, majority of them actually picked the black doll. All of the negatives virtually were codified in the black doll. And you could see parents really upset. They didn't understand this. So they did the study again not too long ago. What do you think the results were? They were the same. The black children still saw themselves as not smart, as ugly, as bad. Recently, why? The parents were crying uh, behind the glass because they said, we teach our children to love themselves and to love the culture. How did this happen? This happened because you're not the only teachers of a child. Societal construct transforms the thinking of a child through the normative atmosphere of education, which is constant. Education does not have to be formal. Education is happening all the time through television, ads, social media, whatever it may be. And so if the society is still saying the same message as it did in the 60s, then the children will receive the same message today as they did before. So that's why it takes intentional efforts like this to make sure that there's positive reinforcement of your culture, especially in significant characters like Santa Claus, even though it is a fictional character. All right, David, thoughts here. You're absolutely right, Dr. Richie. It is about the children, and to the extent that the children are happy, that's all that that's all that matters. And and you know, I I I think this is great that there's a business out there that realizes, you know, there's an unmet need, and that is we need to have people who look like us, 
uh, different communities as Santa Claus, whether it's black, Asian, Latino. Um, we, we had an incident the other day. Well, I'll, I'll tell you an incident involved one of my own kids, uh, and it's a little bit different. But one of my kids used to like to play with Barbie dolls, right? He's and my son. He played with Barbie dolls, and he liked to put on his sister's like high heeled shoes. Mm -hmm. And part of it was sort of like, okay, I suppose you could say to the kid, well, this isn't really for boys. But we we're like. This is great. It makes him happy. If he likes right. to play with Barbie dolls, if he likes to wear girl shoes, <laughs> whatever there's no such thing as girl shoes and boy shoes and black things and white things. We're all just they're all just kids. That's and right. as long as the kids are happy and as long as they're having a positive experience, that's all that matters. There it is. Very well said. Imagine you being arrested. Because you had an opinion that the cop did not like. That's exactly what happened to a Virginia driver, Mr. Anthony of Spurgeon. Let's go to the first video. Here it is. Deputy Carroll, the sheriff's off. Why didn't you have your seatbelt on, man? I didn't have my seatbelt on. Yeah. I didn't have my seatbelt when I came to go in. No, nah, when I passed you, you didn't have your seatbelt on, dude. Yeah, I did have my seatbelt on. No, sir. You got your ID on you? All right, so if I catch you driving again, you know what? I know if I catch you being extremely petty. I'm not That's being petty. Exactly I'm not being petty. I'm explain I'm explaining the law. Okay, and that and that's the Georgia law. See? I'm explaining it all to you. Look, no matter what you say, you guys look for certain people to go ahead and stop. Okay, so I'm explaining everything to you. Alright. If I catch you driving again, next time you stop, you will go to jail. Sir? I'm sorry, sir. What was that? My sheriff's black and I enjoy him just fine. So what's your sheriff's black? I, I mean, know, I know people that are married to black people. It's still a race. Cutting the roadway, please. I'm not, I'm not even in the roadway. How that is considered road? roadway, Lee. All right, come on, come on, come on. You want to keep playing this? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. You, you don't have to. What are you? You want to play this game? We'll play it. You're under arrest for driving on no, suspended license. No, you, no, you, you got locked me up for dog on obstructing the road roadway at your day. No, you're under Obviously, the charges were dropped. Uh, here's the issue. He has a Virginia driver's license fully intact. He was pulled over by a Georgia cop. This Georgia cop gave him a warning, but then decided to effect an arrest because he did not like the opinion of this black man telling the truth about the fact that he was being petty. We actually have some more. Let me take you to another video, same cop. Here it is. Thirty thirty three headquarters. Go ahead. Me, Jordan Road, just down from Junior for Creek. Correct. Deputy Carroll, the sheriff's off. Why didn't you have your seatbelt on, man? I didn't have my seatbelt on. Yeah. I had my seatbelt when I came to go in. No, nah, when I passed you, you didn't have your seatbelt on, dude. Yeah, I did have my seatbelt. No, nah, sir. You got your ID on you? Yeah, I have my ID on. I did have my seatbelt on. Okay. Okay, that was the U-turn. So what we saw in that video was actually the U-turn uh, that took place. There's no evidence that there was a criminal violation. We have significant evidence that the man was arrested because he had a contrary opinion to the police officer. That is a no-no, you do not get arrested because you exercise your freedom of speech, right? Okay, uh, let's put up a picture of the victim of this cop. I have a lot of background, significant story here. Now, this individual, did nothing illegal. Mr. Anthony Spurgeon was correct in his assertion of rights. He was protected by the Constitution in his freedom of speech. None of that mattered on the side of that road in the in the state of Georgia. None of it. Cop didn't give a damn about his constitutional rights. Cop did not give a damn about the statutory law. Former Crawford County Sheriff's Deputy James Carroll arrested the 55 year old for driving on a suspended license. That was a lie. Mr. Spurgeon presented 
the officer a valid Virginia ID. Now remember, the officer was leaving and then there was more conversation. If Mr. Spurgeon had a suspended license, do you really think this cop would have let him go? No, he just made up a charge to justify the arrest because he knew he had nothing else. All right, uh, Spurgeon's, charges, uh, Spurgeon's charges were dropped, obviously they were dismissed later. Uh, we have that evidence and uh, he has since obtained a Georgia driver's license. He says he still spent three hours in jail. His wife had to post bail for him. Uh, and he also had to get his truck out of impound, so it created significant inconvenience. There's more. Uh, the incident was actually the second time Officer Carroll stopped Mr. Spurgeon. Much prior to his arrest, Carroll made another U-turn to pull over Mr. Spurgeon for a um, burnt out license plate light, according to the official record. You know when someone is treating you unfairly. He turned his patrol car around both times, he stopped me. He changed his story when I said, I'm not in the roadway. That's when he said, do you want to do you want to play games? Spurgeon contacted to complain about his treatment, but was told the deputy who arrested him was transferred to the Byron, Georgia Police Department. Here's Spurgeon's complaint to the sheriff. Here's Crawford County Sheriff Lewis Walker and Byron Police Chief Wesley Cannon. The Byron Department did not immediately respond to our request for comment. Isn't that something? Pulled over twice, both BS. And we clearly see in one video, the only reason the man was arrested is because he said something the cop did not like. Oh My goodness, he accused you of being racist, of being biased, of being prejudiced, of being petty. How do you show your professionalism officer? Be racist, be petty, arrest the man for a charge that doesn't even exist for him. All right, David Thoughts here. We do a lot of videos on Rebel HQ about police interactions and it, it happens all the time. There's so many people who are police officers who instead of their mission of upholding the constitution, protecting and serving the citizens, the only concern that, that they have is protecting their own ego. That they are so fragile, they are so easily insulted that if God forbid somebody should exercise a first amendment right and say something they don't like. Suddenly that person, is the, the, the fragility comes out and oh no, now it's time for me to put you in your place because I'm the police officer, you're the citizen. I'm the one who has the power. And so that's what happens. We have so many cops who are out there who care only about abusing their authority and want to put people in their place. And that's not the reason to be a police officer. Officer, your role is to protect and to serve people. Yes, you have a lot of discretion, but if somebody says something you don't like, that doesn't mean that you get to go make up charges against somebody. Unfortunately, this happens all the time. That's right, happens too much, but one way we combat this is through exposure, transparency. The great disinfectant to corruption and darkness is light. All right, we have more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. All right, we had a technical issue, my apologies to all watching, but we got it straight now, hopefully. Got something for you, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a Sunday? I feel great. Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Literally, why is your mom in my room? You are psycho. You are psycho, and you need a psychiatrist in medicine. Are you kidding me? You are psycho. She left the door open accidentally, and even if she didn't, did anything happen? Yeah, her cat. My cat was out. Okay, we almost. Are they okay? Are they okay? They, what if they that, were? What if they were? Uh, are they okay? You have absolutely no right to be standing in my house. No right to act like You actually, child. you're, you, oh you my know, God. You know what though? Is a grown man, is a grown woman sense? talking to me right now if like this? you common sense, you wouldn't be friends with her. Jocelyn told me all she said about you weeks ago, the stuff she was gonna do to you, to your room, get you thrown off the cheer squad. I never did that. You know why she has people in her life? Cause she's a poster girl for mean girls. Only reason people in our life is because it's easier to be her fake friend. Do you know what your daughter did? To be her enemy. Do you know what your daughter did to us? I never said she was innocent in anything. I'm glad you know. I'm ridiculous. glad you know. 
I'm being ridiculous for your daughter putting my safety at risk? Do you know about the Idaho murders? Do you know college kids are getting murdered? How close are they? Oh my god. Your wife's crazy. No. Your mom's crazy. Oh hell no. Get the out of my house. Get get out. None of your names are on the lease. Get out of my room. I will call the police. Get out of my room. Stop. You're embarrassing yourself. Your daughter sucks as a person. All over town. This is hilarious. This is hilarious. Person and she always will be. You wish, baby. It was your daughter. It was your daughter that came in between her relationship in front of my relationship oh, and know. the other roommate's relationship. You your daughter has a bridge to herself. She constantly talks about you, so trust me, you're not innocent either. Whoa. There's more. Get out of my room or else I'm going to call the cops. This is your last warning. Uh, call the call police. Them. Call them. Let's show them all the documentation we have. Let's call them. Get out of my room. Get out of my room right now. Or I will call them. Okay. I got to call them. We also have all of the proof of your daughter harassing us and that she has done to us. I'm sorry that we finally fought your daughter back. Yeah. It's really unfortunate that you raised such a now you're gonna get out of my room. We um we had a discussion about this, me and the production team, and we have classified this as a cackle of Karen's. <laughs> All right, let's put them up. Let me go ahead and explain the characters here. From left to right, you got Karen Mom, you have Stand By and Do Nothing Dad. You have drama monster roommate and her possible sister. Uh, TikToker Jess Roberts, who experienced this situation, explained in an update video, the Karen mom continued to yell and scream at her and the other roommate present in her bedroom. See that, okay? Jess and the three other roommates then called the cops, gathering their cats and valuables to keep close by. Unfortunately, the cop who arrived did come in or do much. Saying the joint lease situation prevented them from doing anything with the intrusive of Karen, mother. The cop said the only thing to be done was to talk with their landlord, which she appears to have done per the caption for the video, the updated video. Uh, she simply states she warned the landlord about the drama monster roommate and her family. Well, okay. Arguments happen, uh, debate takes place. Sometimes people who cohabitate, who are close in proximity may not get along. But to have the mother and the father and I guess another person uh, kind of stand at your door and then the mom goes into your room. Well, that's just a new one on me. David, have you ever seen anything like this before brother? No, I mean this is a family that's uh, that's kooky, uh, and <laughs> clearly the 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 daughter, the monster roommate, uh, who obviously, I mean, she was clearly raised this way because we could see from the mom, anybody who would invade your space like that with yeah. the dad would step into your room, would violate your own personal space. There's a time and a place to try to have a resolution, to have a discussion about things that may be going on in a joint house, or people have complaints about utility bills or whatever's going on. But to actually physically step into somebody's own private space, uh, that takes a special kind of Karenicity. And clearly there's a family of them in this one. Well said. All right, a mother decides to catfish her own daughter, harasses her and gets arrested. I kid you not, let's put the picture up full mass. This is an insane story, but true. A Michigan mother has been charged after allegedly harassing her own teenage daughter and her daughter's boyfriend under a fake identity online for more than a year. That's called dedication. 42 year old Kendra Gail Lakari of Mount Pleasant, Michigan is now charged with two counts of stalking a minor. One count of obstruction of justice, both felonies with a maximum of five years in prison. So basically, um, she was committing a crime virtually every day, all right? She was also charged with two counts of using a computer to commit a crime, a felony for which she could receive up to 10 years in prison, according to the Morning Sun. 
She was taken into custody and charged on Monday. She was released with a $5,000 bond. The mom is scheduled to appear in court again on December 29th. We will give you the update on that. Officials began to investigate this. They were investigating her alleged messages after cyberbullying complaints were sent to her daughter's school district. Bill City Schools, where the mother was also a girls basketball coach, is where it happened. The complaint involved the daughter as well as her teenage boyfriend. That's according to the Morning Sun. Uh, let's put up the county prosecutor involved in this. Isabella County Prosecutor, his name is David Burberry, said per the Morning Sun that the mother and other students and the other student's mother initially helped the school district investigate the harassing message. It's okay, yeah. The parents got involved and they started to help us with this investigation. This was a serious issue, okay? But when the district resources ran low and it became apparent that many of the messages were received off school grounds, local police stepped in to assist. Family members then told authorities that the teenagers started getting the messages early last year, according to the prosecutor. There were allegedly up to 12 text messages per day. After the prosecutor's office gathered 349 pages of text messages and social media DMs, the local authorities ultimately called in the FBI's computer crime division in April. Uh oh, let's put up the superintendent. All right, so what do we have so far? We have the uh, prosecutor involved, school system involved. We have the local police involved, and now we have the FBI involved. Because a mother has decided to catfish, according to the allegation, her own daughter at the school she works at and her daughter's boyfriend. So you're looking at Bill City School Superintendent William Chillman also said, per the morning sun, authorities told him they suspected that it was the mother. They, they told him. We think it's her. The FBI confirmed their suspicion when it determined the messages were coming from the mom's IP address, multiple IP addresses. Barbary told the publication, he added that the mom admitted to police to sending the messages. According to a criminal complaint obtained by Local 12, the mother allegedly masked her location with a software program and use multiple numbers and area codes. So it would seem as if her daughter's friends were sending the text messages. There's more. The mother also spoke in slang terms and used trendy abbreviations, the Morning Sun reported. She ultimately aided her daughter in telling authorities about the messages, local nine and 10 news reported. This thing just gets more ridiculous by the minute. By the minute. Barbary said the mother alleged motives are not clear. However, her daughter and the other teenager are said to be distraught, according to the local news. What in the hell? Okay, um, when I saw this story, I initially thought, okay, there has to be some other explanation. Maybe there's a massive mistake and the mother is being blamed. But after vetting the story, Proving uh, uh, the facts and looking at the details. Not only did she admit it, but it was so clear as to who was behind it that all of the authorities have universally agreed. What's interesting is that the dedication it took to do something like this. <laughs> uh, she was literally playing multiple characters every single day in order to harass her own teenage daughter and her daughter's boyfriend. Um, this is one of those what in the hell stories. David, man, if if I did not know it to be true, I would say no way in the hell this happened. Thoughts here? 12 messages a day, that's a lot. Wow. And look, I get the impulse as a parent. Sure, you wanna keep track of who your daughter is talking to online. And if your daughter has a boyfriend, are they being responsible? I, I could sort of get that. And is the boyfriend tempted to cheat on your daughter? I, I could sort of understand that. But this idea that you would go to such great lengths to test out any of this or to have such a unhealthy obsession with your daughter's life that you would spend 12 messages a day 
365 pages of documents, creating all these fictitious people. Um, that's really bizarre. And I, yeah. I feel badly for the daughter and the boyfriend because I think distraught is an understatement. All teenagers are embarrassed by their parents. But can you imagine what this particular teenager has to deal with now? This yeah. is really crazy. Yeah, and then in addition to that, the mother is a coach at the school. Uh-huh. If she would treat her own daughter this way, how would she treat your daughter? Uh, that has to now be a question uh, for parents and the school system at large. We have more on the other side of indisputable stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We have a lot of show left. All right, always good to be with you. Let me read a couple of comments. I don't have a lot of time, very, very pressed for time. Okay. All right, spectrophonic. Um, you're in another person's private space doing this question mark. That's right. That's exactly what they were doing. Um, and Hunger Games underscore 1989 is coming from inside the house. We're talking about the catfish. Okay. We have another exclusive. A man decides to physically assault a bus driver. Now, this is an exclusive to indisputable. I will give you the background, but let me first take you to the video. Here it is. Man right here harassing me and saying that there's no idling. It's illegal to idle. I'm here to pick up the kids from school and there's no space because it's the van right here. Like you don't have nothing better else to do with your time. You don't have nothing better else to do with your time, but harass me. Let, let, let me, yeah, let me come get your face, cause you got my face too, and I don't know why. Can you? <laughs> for what? It's against the law. To it's, the, it's against this, the law. You this, know, there's a school right here. If this, you were, if you live exactly around this area. All right. So no why, why are you harassing me right now? No. Why you? Har- no. Can you back up away from my bus, please? Can you back up away from my bus, please? Can you back up away from my bus, please? Can you back up away from my bus? Can you call Joby right now? Call Joby right now. Call him. Call him, cause he is opposing a threat right now. Why are you inside my bus, sir? You're inside my bus, sir. Can you back up, please? I feel threatened. I feel threatened. Excuse me. Can you back away from my bus, please? Can you back away from my bus, please? Can you back away from my bus, please? Can you? Back- He just threatened me. He just threatened me. I don't know this man. Call the police. Yeah, yeah, call him right now, please, because my other phone is off. Here's what happened next. You just touched me. You, you, yes, he did. He just touched me. Call Joby right now, please. He touched her. Call Joby right now, please. I know, I know, and it's right that you acted as shit. It's okay. Call the police. She touched my phone first. You have it in my, you were in my, no, you're in my bus. I asked you over 10 times. Now you're in my face. I feel threatened. Call the police. I feel threatened. Call the police. I'm not hearing nothing you said. I feel threatened right now. You hear what I said? I know, because no, 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 I don't need your help. You. That's crazy, that's crazy. No, it's not crazy. Yes, it is crazy. Yeah, no, y'all coming up to people and just hitting people? That's okay, that's okay. Where's the window? Did you just say you was calling the police? This took place in the Bronx. Let's put up the picture of the victim. Her name is Nyla Bracey, 27 years of age, a single mother and a bus driver. She was waiting outside the school for disabled children. The man confronted her because she committed the high crime of idling a bus, which is not a crime. Nyla told Indisputable, it's her company's policy to leave the bus running in the minutes before she picks up children. Because the buses she operates can be old and can have trouble starting. I know this to be a fact as a former high school teacher. The teachers were told, the bus drivers were told the same thing at my school. When the police finally did come, they took her complaint but said the man had harassed her and denied he hit her, okay? Uh, Ms. Bracey went to the hospital the next day for neck injuries she received. Her doctor said she was temporarily disabled.
from the attack, okay? That's the actual note from the medical professional. Brace says she was frustrated. The police did not charge the man with assault despite showing the video of him striking her. So she filed a complaint to the city about Sergeant Danny Laura, the supervisor at the scene who refused to do anything. That is the complaint she filed. The complaint review board referred her to the chief, but Sergeant Laura emailed her back. This is the quote, good morning, Mrs. Bracey. This is Sergeant Laura from the 45th precinct. I am investigating your complaint report, please call me. Wait a minute, you're the person that I'm complaining about. Okay, she also said to indisputable, I think it's weird that the sergeant I'm complaining about is investigating his own case. Honestly, my work wanted the assailant statement for the workers comp claim. So with the sergeant calling me and my claims getting denied and my claims getting denied, I'm just feeling very discouraged and depressed. Look at this circle of silliness that's happening around this woman. She gets assaulted, she's attacked. She calls the police, police come, there's nothing we can do even though she shows them the video. She then takes the extra step of doing what? Filing an actual complaint against the cop that did nothing. Yeah, that's the process. She gets an email back, hey, I'm the person investigating your report. And it happens to be the same cop that she complained about. Um, let's put up the picture of her and her beautiful child. Um, Brace filed a workers compensation claim over the incident. The single mother says she is struggling to support her one year old daughter now. The sergeant has refused to respond to our request for comment. All right, we're gonna continue to bring you updates as this story develops. Obviously, another miscarriage of justice. Black woman who should have been protected by law enforcement was not. And this is why I say it's very important for us to advocate for black women in particular because they are the most underprotected demographic in the country. David, thoughts here. The NYPD should be weeding this uh, sergeant out. I mean, it's on video, the evidence is clear. He slapped her, he acted inappropriately. And then for him to sort of think that he could investigate it himself, clearly wow. that's intimidation. This violates all kinds of New York Police Department policies. This needs to go to internal affairs immediately. Yes. If the NYPD sits on this, that's a problem. I would like to think that the NYPD would just look at this story and say, this guy is suspended pending investigation. That's right. and the. Uh, police department will receive a copy of this segment today. CNN host calls out the racism of an LA city council person. And it is artful to watch, here it is. Totally understand, but it wasn't you. What you it wasn't just that you didn't stand up. You also took part in the conversation. I mean, in it, you said you compared the young black child of a fellow councilman to um, being an accessory like a luxury handbag. Well, let me give this some context because one thing I really wish that the media did was provide context and sort of, um, it was much more nuanced, these general comments. Now, I mean, I can, pl I, I can play it for them and we don't need to, I mean, no, I can, I I, yeah. let's play, then let everybody hear what you said. Here, let me play this. What, what I want to say, what, well, God. let's play it. I mean, you have said in subsequent interviews and you say you're profoundly sorry that you have failed in leadership yes. and accept responsibility. But what exactly was is the mis what exactly was the mistake that you made that you are apologizing for? Well, obviously that was a, uh, a it was I shouldn't have said what I said um, because it was actually a comment was I was criticizing actually Councilwoman Nuri Martinez for her pension for luxury handbags. Uh, no, 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 Councilman, that's not what you were doing, uh, Mr. De Leon. You were being racist. Now, we covered this when it first happened. So if you remember, there was a conversation, multiple council members involved, as well as some advocacy uh, leaders that were involved in this 
very offensive, very racist conversation that had real world impact, not only on their careers. But keep in mind, they were going to pass legislation based on their bias. That was the conversation, which is a miscarriage obviously of their particular duty. This is not how it's supposed to go. Now, Kate would also ask, hey, why have you not resigned? Here it is. Every leader involved in this scandal, either including the now former council president, they're all, they've all resigned or are leaving because of the mess that this has created. Why are you not resigning? I know you say you still have work to do, but other members, the points that the council members are making still today about this whole thing is that they say that the city cannot heal if you are still there. And one member saying that your continued presence on the council is causing severe and ongoing harm. Well, let me say this, Kate, and let me be very clear about this. In a democracy, the voters make the decision, uh, not folks uh, who are in the peanut gallery or political pundits or uh, even my own colleagues. That's your answer? Okay, so you engage in not only racist rhetoric, you are willing to engage in policy dynamics and make policy decisions based on your racial bias, you get caught in this supposedly off record conversation. It gets exposed and you tell the world you take full responsibility. That's what Kevin DeLeon said, I take full responsibility. But you have not, sir, you have not taken full responsibility. Let me tell you what has been damaged here. I'm an advocate for the black and brown coalition. Still an advocate for that today. You and your colleagues harmed that relationship. That relationship, sir, is bigger than you. And if you had any sense of nobility, you would understand that. Step away, reflect, maybe come back as a real redeemed individual. But you're not even able to answer simple questions about yourself. Which leads me to believe you have not dealt with what you did in an authentic way. There's more. Why is he still attending the council meetings? Well, it was polled. Here it is. Are you surprised by the reaction of the council members who left in protest and also people in the community who are clearly still very upset and not over this scandal? Well, good morning, Kate. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't quite surprised by a handful of individuals who serve on the city council with them walking out. Um, obviously, uh, it's unfortunate, uh, but then, nonetheless, I came on Friday to get back to work. There is in the city charter, um, it does say that an office becomes vacant when an office holder is absent from the city without the consent of the council for more than 60 days. Your attendance on Friday to that council meeting was, depending on how you count it, either exactly the 60 day mark or just before. I know you said you wanted to return to, to get back to work, but is that also why you showed up in order to avoid no, a fight over your seat? No, because today, for example, we have a council uh, meeting and I'll be attending the council meeting uh, today as well. Come on, man. Come on, you went to the council meeting to avoid or to stop their ability to then basically remove you because you were inactive. So we know exactly why you went to that particular council meeting. And listen, just a few days ago, you went viral for this. Here it is. As you're on tape, you're on tape making fun of a colleague's young black child when there's a racist conversation that's occurring. That colleague who's a fellow Democrat now still considers you and his words are a vile racist is how he puts it, Councilman. You've been absent from the committee um, since October. The council meetings have been shut down multiple times over this scandal due to committee members, community members protesting and the committee not being able to um, operate the council. And then the last week you got into a physical fight, no matter who started it and I know there is video that has come out to show how serious the altercation did become. But you got into a fight then on Friday with an activist. If this was anyone else, would you say that the person I just described is serving their community well? 
Now, let me say this, Kate, is that's not the person who I am. Let me underscore that. I have a body in the history of progressive, you know, policies that have improved the human condition for all individuals, regardless of who you are, regardless of where you come from, regardless of the color of your skin or your legal status or who you love or which God you pray to. That's who I am. You're a lie. Let me tell you why. Now, I'm not highlighting the fight. You may have been defending yourself based on some commentary, I don't know. But I do know this, you're not the person you proclaim to be. You're not the individual we thought you were. Yes, you have championed particular legislation that I agree with. Yes, we believe that you were one of the authentic allies to the fight for fairness, progress, equity, unity. What was exposed is your hypocrisy that was exposed. Now, if I allow you to get away with this, if I say, you know what? The guy actually does vote the right way, that's that's all That's all there, there needs to be. What makes me different than a racist ass Trump supporter? When individuals know they're racist and know their heart is not in the right place, but they continue to support them because they may vote a particular way at some point. There has to be a moral and ethical rule, culture that cultivates the heart of a person as well as their politics. Because out of your heart, sir, the mouth speaketh and you spoke out of your heart. I'm not saying you cannot change. I am not saying you cannot redeem yourself, but I am saying that when you hopped on CNN, you were lying your ass off. You have not dealt with your own humanity or shortcomings as it relates to race in America. Which also tells me that even though you may make the right decision based on policy at times, you are also prone to make the wrong one. All right, fair thoughts here. You know, it, it, it really comes down to uh, which is the real persona and which is mm. the fake persona? Are you really the individual seen, you know, roughing up the guy on the video? Are you the guy on tape making those racist comments, or are you the the guy out there fighting for progressive causes? One of those is the real you, right. and they do not coalesce together. And at this point, it's starting to look more like the fake you is the one voting for progressive measures because you think it'll help your career. The real him is the one we heard on that tape. That's my belief as well, it's unfortunate. But we have to show that we're different than those we come against. A trans woman disarrested for what? For being a man in a dress according to the authorities. This is insane, uh, Bexar County, Texas. Let's do this first, let's put it in the picture full mass. I'm gonna give you the background. On October 16th, Joanne Simoncelli, who is a transgender woman, was arrested on her own property, all right? Own property for allegedly filing a false police report and for being a, and I quote, man in dress. This is in Texas. Here's what led to the arrest. On the day of her arrest, she alleges she was exiting her property, taking photos for real estate purposes. According to her, um, her nephew who lived nearby surprised her while she was in the car and began shouting, okay? And began shouting <coughs> transphobic slurs. Simicelli remained in the vehicle as the nephew's frustration began to grow. He then punched her car window, okay? That's a horrible family incident. She and her nephew both contacted law enforcement about the incident. When officers responded, the nephew outed Joanne as a trans woman, okay? As if somehow that's a crime, right? Uh, she was then arrested for making a false police report, what? After her arrest, she was placed in jail with the male population, even though her driver's license identified her as a female. She was ridiculed with transphobic hate speech and subjected to physical pain. Here is what she had to say 
in an Instagram post. I feel my civil rights and human rights were violated. I ask that my dear friends come support me December 5th, 2022 in the San Antonio County Courthouse, County Court 15 at 8 a.m. The injustice to the LBGTQIA community must stop. Please join me. I've been instructed by counsel to not make any further comments about this pending case. Right? That's what she said. But let's be very clear, right? Regardless, regardless of your faith conviction or whatever you believe about individuals in the LGBTQIA community, whatever, whatever you believe, you have to believe that it is wrong to arrest someone for existing. No matter what your thoughts may be about anything else, to come to somebody's property and arrest them for this has to make you upset. And if it doesn't make you upset, you're part of the problem. There's more, um, her civil rights were in fact violated. Um, this case, her case is a typical uh, double standard case and harassment that many in the trans and non-binary community and the intersex community, they experience daily under capitalism. She did everything she was supposed to do in the eyes of the law, undertaking the lengthy and grueling process of changing all of her legal documents to reflect her lived gender. When she was attacked, she again did what people are supposed to do. The correct thing to do, what? Call emergency services, there's more. After the case grew support and attention, her court case was shuffled around like a card game, all right? That's what happened. She is now facing the injustices of the legal system's bureaucracy. Her court case was originally scheduled for December 7th. The Party for Socialism and Liberation Black Freedom Factory and Act 4 SA organized a rally in her defense at the Bexar County Courthouse to defend her and protest the racist transphobic justice system. So what happened? They moved it again, they moved the court case several times. And then they moved it to Zoom and has now been rescheduled for next month. Activists are demanding that the county drop the charges and dismiss the case. And that the deputy who arrested her, as well as the jail staff who subjected her to ridicule and placed her within the male population be held accountable for their actions. Anything else would be a grave injustice. And I agree 100% of grave injustice, not only to her, but to the LGBTQ community. Um, it is an injustice, period. Put up a picture of the head guy in charge, okay? Buck stops with this fellow. Uh, his name is Sheriff Javier Salazar. He's been with that county as sheriff since 2017. All of this because somebody is biased. Not just somebody, but systems. At some point, someone should have said clearly, this is wrong. Do not do this. I will not accept this arrest, but they did. Not only did they accept the ridiculous arrest, they decided to ridicule the person who was arrested wrongfully. Now for some, I already know, you're going to say you don't give a damn about trans individuals. And you may wax poetic about your feelings and your religious conviction, whatever it may be. But I want to remind you that if you are a Christian evangelical, if you belong to a Christian faith at all, scripture says God is love, which also means love is God. It was Jesus, Yahshua, who said, how can you say you love God whom you have never seen? But hate your brothers, hate your sisters who you see every day. I challenge your convictions when it comes to the humanity that you're supposed to love. Because all I see is a bunch of folks, a bunch of cowards who are afraid of the reality of their own shortcomings, trying to make other people small. All right, David, thoughts here. I'm disturbed by the nephew uh, and clearly his you know, yeah. bias and, and hatred that he has in his heart. But I'm also just as disturbed by the responding police officer because this is not a difficult call for a police officer. Right. You show up on the scene and you're told this person hit this person. So you take the nephew and say, I don't care 
who she is, what he is, what you think is going on, their race, their creed, their religion. You don't hit people. And when you hit people, you have committed assault. And I'm taking you to jail. But for the police officer to suddenly turn this around because he sees that this is a trans person and therefore that's the person he needs to go to jail. That shows that the police officer needs to get out of police work. He is he is yeah. no responsibility to this community. He's only making things worse and my heart goes out to this poor person. Yeah, at, at this point, prosecutor needs to drop the case. They don't want the smoke, they keep changing the date. They've moved it to Zoom and they're now changing it again. Uh, we'll stay on top of it. We have more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick it, stay. All right, welcome back. We still have a lot of show left. New York Times, they have a crossword puzzle that resembles a swastika. It is causing outrage, but there's more background to the story that will cause more outrage. On the first night of Hanukkah, the New York Times released this Crossword puzzle designed in the shape of a swastika. According to TMZ, the puzzle's designer described it as a simple, fun whirlpool shape. Let's also look to the image on the right. Is that also a fun whirlpool shape? There's so much more. Many blasted the New York Times for the anti-Semitic design. Regardless of whether or not it was intentional with one saying, how did this get approved without somebody noticing? And another one noting a hidden happy Pentecost message in today's New York Times crossword. One Twitter user posted this Jeopardy screenshot stating the answer, question dynamic, cryptic crossword clues. What is the New York Times swastika? Alex, there it is. Uh, There's more to the cryptic message. This crossword appeared on the same day that the New York Times published an opinion piece warning against Israel's new government. Prime Minister designate uh, Benjamin Netanyahu hit out the publication on Sunday writing in a quote after burying the Holocaust for years on his back pages and demonizing Israel for decades on his front pages. The New York Times now shamefully calls for undermining Israel's election or elected (coughs) incoming government. These are too many coincidences here. Uh, This is not the first time the New York Times has done something like this. Put up the picture, all right? Uh, This is not the first time. So this was back in 2017, this one made it to the press. The response was, and I quote, yes, hi. It's not a swastika, honest to God. No one sits down to make a crossword puzzle and says, hey, you know what would look cool? Question mark. Also worth mentioning in 2019, the New York Times claimed they were deeply sorry for an anti Semitic illustration depicting Donald Trump wearing a yarmulke while walking Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, appearing as a dog with a star of David Leash. The response for the most. Uh, The response for the most recent swastika was this, all right? This is a common crossword design. Many people grids, many open grids and crosswords have a similar spiral pattern because of the rules around rational symmetry and black squares. There it is, all right, I guess mystery solved. It's a damn shame. All of those dynamics happening on the same day, come on. Um, And here's the other dynamic. Let's say you actually give them the benefit of the doubt. You give them the benefit of the doubt, it's a mistake. At some point, someone should have enough sensitivity to say, wait a minute, hold on. We don't need to do this, but nobody did. Even though multiple instances like this have happened on some level from the same company. All right, 
David, thoughts here? Look, I don't think this was intentional. I mean, it's hard for me to believe that this would be intentional, but the New York Times is still culpable and responsible for the fact that they didn't have layers of people like they do with everything else to check right. this. And somebody should have said, wait a second, what's going on here? Let's change this. And the other part about it that drives me crazy is I cannot stand Benjamin Netanyahu. I think he is a danger to Israel, a danger to the Palestinian people, a danger to the peace process. And when you enable him to be able to paint a broad brush of the New York Times as somehow being anti Semitic, you have have made his day. You are helping Benjamin Netanyahu's case, and that irks me beyond belief. All right, there it is. We shall see. I'm sure there will be more commentary about this as it develops, because people are now doing a lot of research. We got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. So, a white male investment banker physically assaults a black female worker and basically gets to go home without even posting a bond. Let's put up both of their pictures full mass and I will give you the background to the insanity already happening. White investment banker was arrested for assaulting a New York City subway worker while she was on duty last week. MTA worker Tanya Hinton McCrary was punched in the face by this guy. His name is John Coste on December 16th, 2022. Mr. Coste, who has, who is an equity analyst with a major asset management company, was charged with assault, harassment, and menacing. Let me give you background of the incident. The police say shortly after midnight, Mr. Coste attempted to push himself inside the Coney Island Steelwell Avenue subway stations. Uh, subway stations crew up room to use the bathroom. So this is a uh, restricted area, employees only. He tried to force himself into this restricted area. Miss McCrary, who was on duty at the time and had been working for 21 years at MTA, told the man he could not come into the area because it was for employees only. So the male reportedly became offended that he could not access this restricted area for employees and decided to punch the black woman multiple times in the face. All right, there's more. As a result of this incident, Ms. McCrary was hospitalized and treated for several bruises. After the assault, the male tried to escape into an idling train, but transit workers cornered him, holding him until the NYPD arrived. They took him into custody temporarily. The man was released by who? Law enforcement. The man was released by law enforcement without bail later the same day after a brief arraignment in Brooklyn Criminal Court and instructions to stay away from McCrary. There's more. Mr. Coste has been suspended from the firm effective immediately. That's what the asset management company said. They said they don't tolerate this kind of behavior, uh, completely intolerant of violent behavior and pending further investigation, we will take whatever action is necessary, all right? So while the company stated that he was suspended, I just read the statement to you. It did not clarify if his suspension was with pay or without pay. However, since the attack, it has scrubbed the Northeastern University alumnus name off of their website. The white male committed this crime allegedly, has made his two personal social media accounts, Instagram and Facebook private. And he is due back in Brooklyn court March 1st, should he be convicted of his charges, he faces up to seven years. Now I wanna remind you, they released the man with no bail. They released the man with no bail. Law enforcement said, eh, you know what? You can really just go home. You did what? You punched a black woman in the face multiple times. You committed criminal trespass and then you tried to flee the scene. And employees had to detain you for the police to arrive because you were trying to escape. No problem, we're gonna just let you go here. You don't have to worry about escaping from us. All right, we got your back. What kind of foolishness is this? David, thoughts here. 
this is white asset manager privilege. The fact that he was wow. white and was yeah. allowed to simply, you know, not, not doesn't have to post bail. And the fact that he had this kind of job that New York, I guess, authorities felt like, oh, he has a certain stature in our society. He manages pieces of paper and money. Therefore, we're going to cut him some, cut him a break. That is absurd. And again, it gets to the institutional racism that we have seen play over and over in so many parts of our society. Well said. David, always a pleasure, dear brother, having you on the program. Tell people how they can follow you, check out your great work. Rebel HQ on Facebook and YouTube. You can get me on Twitter at David Schuster. We do a lot of videos about police interactions, constitutional rights, and you can always hit us up with comments and suggestions and stories that you want to see on the channel. My pleasure having you on the program all the time. For those who are watching, I just want to remind everybody, every day should be a day when you walk in the spirit of love. Not just holidays, not just special occasions. So make sure you reach out to someone. If you have somebody that you need to talk to, apologize to, or just reconnect with. Tomorrow's never promised, make it happen today. Remember to take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember the truth is always indisputable.